Hey y'all. Hi. I keep doing this thing where, well, the thing that's happening is that it's December and so I'm trying to produce as much content as possible. This is really like go time for people who make YouTube videos. But I keep filming these massive videos that have like all these moving parts. There's like the A roll, the B roll, the C roll. I don't know why I didn't think of this before. I planned December, but I didn't. And so here we are. And this is yet another one. I have five pieces of Victoria Beckham makeup that are new to me and one that I've had for about a year now and I'm attempting to review them all in one video. I have filmed like the b-roll, the overheads. You're gonna get those really good close-up overhead swatches and really good close-ups of like the packaging and everything because there's so many moving parts already and because it's I've like set up a massive video because I have six pieces of makeup and you know me. I can take an hour to review one piece of makeup and have done, I'm going to like put the makeup on and talk about it and sort of do a part just application demonstration and also there will be the b-roll that's what we're doing today as opposed to like having c-roll of me applying the makeup and then talking through it. I don't know why I'm telling you this. I'm supposed to just be saying hello. I'm going to be reviewing Victoria Beckham makeup today. My name is Hannah. I love beautiful things including makeup, particularly makeup and so I do reviews like this from time to time on my channel, but I also do a whole bunch of other things. If you enjoy this, I hope that you'll subscribe. And now let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video. We truly cannot tarry today, y'all. We have to get right into it. So I'll tell you what I have. I have the Smoky Eye Brick in Silk, the eyeliner in the shade Bronze, the Satin Kajal Eyeliner. This is, I think, the newest release from VB Beauty, the Cheek Cheeky Posh Cream Blush in Mini Skirt. I have the famous posh lipstick in the shade Girl. And then the one that I've had for a year now is Onyx. Uh, and it's one of the lid lusters. And I'll probably just touch on it at the end because I don't know if I'm actually gonna apply it to my eyes. Maybe I'll apply it to my eyes. We'll see, but it's like in last place in terms of priority because it's something that I've had for a while and I've talked about it before on my channel. And if I can find other videos in which I talk about it specifically, I'll link them below so you can click through and, and see that. I purchased this makeup with money that my channel has set aside specifically for reviews. So I consider this to be a self-sponsored review. I would not have spent this much of my own personal budget on this makeup for myself. Let's start with the Smoky Eye Brick in Silk. The thing that I really wanted, and actually this is like case in point about me not spending my own money on it, but rather purchasing these products for review. The one thing that I really wanted more than anything from Victoria Beckham was the <coughs> Lid Luster in Mink, but I already have tried the Lid Luster formula, so I don't think it would have added value to this review, as much value as choosing a product that I hadn't reviewed before. It is incredibly beautiful. It's something I've always been allured by since this brand launched, and especially since she came out with this version of it, which is one of the more recent releases. This wasn't part of the initial launch. I like these colors. I like that there are four shimmers here. I was curious about the formula, and I really, really love this packaging, which I knew it was going to be tiny, but it's much tinier. It's even tinier in real life than I thought that it would be. What can I compare it to? So here's just like an, an eyeshadow brush, like a pretty petite eyeshadow brush. And you can see how small the compact is. You can kind of even just see when it's in my hand how small it is. I think sometimes even seeing images like this, we kind of trick ourselves into thinking that something is bigger than it's going to be, which isn't a big deal in this case. I mean, I think it's supposed to be something that's compact, easy to transport. I don't think it's a problem. I just think that it's important to note when reviewing if something is like really kind of small feeling compared to maybe how it appears online. The packaging could not be more luxurious. I love the packaging of this brand. It's probably my favorite packaging of all makeup. I love the tortoise shell. I love how luxurious it feels. This has this clasp where you touch it and it pops open. Look at this, look. I don't know if you can really see how awesome it is. Just like that. I tried to capture it in the overhead footage too. It's incredibly gratifying. It's incredibly alluring. It's so covetable, such a little jewel. I love it, I love it, I love it. And 
I'm so underwhelmed by the formula. I'm just warning you, I'm feeling kind of no nonsense today. I don't know, if I were feeling a little more nonsense, I might be like doing the most and going back and forth about the pro the pros and cons. But what I'm gonna tell you is that the, the only pros are of the formula are like in the context of the brand's luxuriousness. And I'm sure that this is great for people who just want one thing. Like this really feels like it's designed for people who have money, who are buying the fanciest makeup, who don't really care about how you apply makeup in all of these ways, and they just wanna have one thing they can throw on their eyes and look like they're wearing a little bit of makeup and have their eyes look a little bit enhanced some of the time. So the formula has got that like very washy, sheer, slightly dusty, but also sort of shimmery quality. It's like, it's impossible to mess up, but it's also impossible to get it to build to anything richer than the color of the initial swatch, which is just a little bit washy. So I'm gonna try to do an eye look with it. I've been okay with the eye looks that I've gotten from it, especially because of the liner, which we'll get to later. But I just, I feel like in the context of my makeup collection, which is robust in, in the eyeshadow department and includes all of these incredible pigmented, textured, rich, special shades from indie brands, from brands like Pat McGrath and Natasha Denona, in the context of all of that eyeshadow, these four eyeshadows here, I gotta say, they're like close to the bottom of the barrel in terms of like their usefulness for me. But I'll get in here a little bit. I'll put it on my eyes and hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. And you'll be able to see whether or not it might be something that works for you and that is for you, even though it's not for me. The most alluring color to me in this quad is the dark brown. I'm seeking dimension and depth and, and smokiness and smudgy sultriness. So I'm gonna start with that. I'm going to put it in my outer corner with a small brush. My eyes are already primed. I, I used um, the Urban Decay Primer Potion. So it's not nothing. It's not as though it doesn't exist. It's there. But here's what I did. I just packed it onto my lids quite densely with this brush. And now I'm gonna blend it out with a fluffier brush and let's see what happens. I mean, it's not going super badly, right? It's not, again, it's not like it's a piece of garbage or something. <laughs> it better not be for $50. But I just, I feel like it's softened it quite a lot and the ed it's been a little bit it's difficult to get the edge to blend in a satisfying way. It's almost like the edge has stuck a little bit. The shape has kind of stuck and blending it has just faded it rather than actually blowing it out at all. And this is what's been happening. I'd, it's like blending just fades it. So I go back with more and I try to build in more. I mean, it actually looks kind of good. <laughs> Maybe I've just used this enough times and like fussed with it enough times and struggled with it enough times that I've, I've gotten to the point where I, I understand like what I need to do to make it work. And I feel like what I need to do to make it work, what I'm doing right now, is doing a little bit of a paint by number thing, right? I'm like putting it where I want it and then just blending the edges in this really tiny way with this little tiny brush. I'm going back in and getting more and more and building more and more where I want it to go because I am actually not mad at this. This is like a good base for a look for me. Let's see what happens when I add one of these like gold, gold shades. I'm going to actually use the copper even though it's not usually my favorite because it has a bit more depth, but I just feel like, no, it doesn't. Like it looks like it would, but then let's see. I'm gonna put it on with my finger. Yeah, that actually looks pretty good too. <laughs> I don't know what I was complaining about. No, I do know, I'll try to get at it, but of course I'm trying to do as good of an eye look as I can. It's not like I was gonna actively mess it up to show you that I've struggled with it. And actually now we're kind of seeing, so I'm bl I'm blending the edges with like a dry brush with no product on it and it's blending away. Maybe you can see it right there. It's really fluffing away quite a bit. This copper shadow, it just doesn't have a lot of shine. It doesn't even really look satiny and it doesn't have a lot of payoff. And then it doesn't really stick very well. I do think that it looks beautiful. And I do think that it's designed this way for a reason. It's designed to be really easy to work with. And you know, the worst thing that's going to happen is that it's going to end up 
fluffing away. So it's like you start working with it and you end up with a lighter look than you intended, a less shadow dense spot on your eye than you thought you were going to get because it's designed so that you can't go overboard and you don't end up looking like a raccoon by accident. Because I think that that's the thing that people who don't do a lot of eyeshadow and aren't really comfortable with it, that's the thing that they're the most afraid of. So it's by design, I will totally give it that. And I am ending up with a more satisfactory look today, pretty much than I have any other time. And I'm flinging my brushes everywhere. I don't know if you've noticed, but that's like the fourth time that I've thrown my brush onto the table or onto the floor since starting this video a mere 17 minutes ago. Okay, not mad at it. I thought I was gonna give this away and now I feel like I might keep it. I am going to put a mix of those two shadows on my lower lash line with this little pencil brush. And then I'm going to use this like lighter, this really pale shimmer shade on my brow bone. We'll see how that goes. Okay, I'm just loving this more and more. I, I don't know what happened since the last time I tried to use this and I have played with it several times to prepare for this review. I feel like maybe what happened is that in the course of being frustrated with it, I've learned what it can do and what it does do well. And today I'm just trying to do that instead of trying to do the like super pigmented, perfectly controlled, very dynamic from very, very dark in the outer corner to like super shiny on the lid type of look, which is what I, often do when I use eyeshadow. Instead of that, I'm doing, today I feel like I'm doing what I consider to be my like Italian movie star eyeshadow, which I think is what this is amazing at. And when I say that, it's my little catchphrase for myself to reference the way that I've been inspired by older women who embrace the way that makeup looks on textured skin around the eyes. And I just feel like I've particularly seen that on like Sophia Loren and like in certain other other films, like old films, but I've also definitely seen it in real life on women, not just in Italy, but in other places in the world. And I just think of that as the Italian movie star look. So it, there's the imperfection because you can't control every single way that makeup goes when skin is more textured, it causes you to have to like relinquish control a little bit. The smudginess and the sort of smeariness and messiness and slight asymmetry, all of that contributes to that look. And also not being so graphic and so extreme about it going from dark to light, all of that is part of that look. And so that's what I'm trying to do today and it's working out really well. And I just feel like that's probably what these formulas are best at. I still do feel like there's a little bit of an uneven blend around like the edge of the shape that I've built up on my lids. And it's also quite asymmetrical between the two eyes. So I'm going to use this white, it's like an ecru or like an eggshell shimmery. It's got like a gold, like a pale gold reflect and brushing it over the edge there has really softened it compared to here. We've got like a harsh line here and on this side, it's very, very soft. So on my skin tone, this shade, this big pan kind of acts like an eraser and like softener, eraser and highlighter for jagged edges of makeup. And it also works for sweeping like under here, like under in the inner part of the lid underneath the front of the brow. But it's so lightly pigmented and so dusty that it feels like you can just take it and just like, blah, 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 like sweep it everywhere, all over everything. And it and it's not going to do very much. And so it it softens things, but it just it never gets overboard. I mean, you can even bring it down here. And I kind of have been doing that like down here. And if I had deeper crow's feet than I do have, or like more intense wrinkles around the outer part of my, like the outer part of my eye right here, going out to the upper part of my cheek, if there were deep creases there, this wouldn't like do very much to highlight them and make those creases seem deeper because it's not that shiny. And I think that that's why it's not that shiny. Here we have a much more successful eye look than I've gotten thus far with this palette and a, li and a little bit more like intense looking than I thought that I would be able to get based on my experience. I think because I like really packed the brown in the outer corner and maybe also because I started with the brown. I think that this is the first time I've done that. I think in the past what I've done is I've started with either the gold or the copper all over the lid and then trying to go in with the brown and build depth on top hasn't worked because the brown won't stick in this like satisfying rich deep way in the outer corner. It won't stick on top of the gold or the copper because this slightly dusty like mid-level pigment 
it doesn't layer very well. In spite of the fact that it's not the formula that I would have designed or the formula that I would have signed off on, I'm kind of into it now. It's like it just grew on me just now. I feel like I, I could see myself taking this if I were going on a long trip where I knew that I might want to wear makeup sometimes, but I probably wasn't going to want to ever do the most with my makeup. I feel like this would be really good or maybe this and like one glitter topper just in case. So that's that for the quad. And you will probably be able to see in the overhead swatches that the shadows aren't really that pigmented and they don't swatch in a very satisfying way. And between that and between what I've said and what I've done here on my eyes today, you'll probably be able to tell whether or not this is something that would be a good buy for you. I feel like it's a very particular thing. And so for some people, it's like exactly what they're looking for. And for some people, it's like, definitely. For some of you, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad that you've told me all of this. I no longer want it. I'm not going to get sucked in by the beautiful packaging or by the price point or the name brand or whatever. Now that I know what the formula is like, some of you are going to react that way. And some of you are probably going to be like, oh, I don't usually buy eyeshadow, but that sounds perfect for me. So that's that. But the best is yet to come because just wait till you see how this product transforms this look. When I first started playing with this quad, I put a much messier, dustier, less satisfying version of this look on my lids. And I was like, what the butt? <laughs> and then I picked up this, the Kajal in the shade bronze, crushed it against my lower lash line, smudged it, smudged it out, and then crushed it against my upper lash line and smudged it out and into the outer corner a little bit. Then he looked in the mirror and I was like, Sophia Loren, is that you? Talk about the Italian movie star look. It brought it so alive. I love this product so much. I'm not gonna wait any longer. I'm just gonna do what I just described with this look, but I'll just do one eye so you can see the difference. It's like a piece of magic right here. This is my favorite piece of makeup that I've discovered in a long time, probably since the rose ink concealer, but they're so different. They do such different things. It's my favorite in its own way. So there it is just on the lower lash line on this eye without even any smudging. And it has this little smudge stick on the end of it. Look at it, it's added more depth than any of those four shadows, even though it's bronze and it doesn't look like it would be. It doesn't look like it would be so, so rich and deep. It's just like the color. The, first of all, the texture is amazing. It's this super creamy, smooth, blendable, and then it sets. It's so easy to work with. But it's not just that, it's the color. It's like this dirty, it's like a dirty martini bronze, rich and dark, but without being black or brown at all. Can you even, like, look at the difference between my two eyes right now? And that's just from putting this in the lower lash line and a little bit in the outer corner and along my lashes. It's more, it's definitely more than just an eyeliner because of how creamy and blend it is. It's almost like I've used it as a combination eyeliner and like cream shadow, actually, especially on the outer corner. And it blends beautifully into the color palette of this palette. I especially love the way that it looks on the lower lash line, how it mingles with my lashes down there and just makes this like slightly grubby, uneven, but like rich, deep eye defining line. I just, I love it so much. I'm gonna get the other eye caught up, but I really wanted to show you the difference so that you know how much of the finished look is going to be due to this product and how little of the finished look is actually something that you can chalk up to the smoky eye brick, because I feel like this look is actually all about this. I just dropped it or threw it on the table, of course, because I'm throwing everything everywhere today. And it landed tip down and look how much it smashed the tip. The tip got completely smashed because it's so soft. I feel like it's it's really like a cream shadow. I mean, seeing how soft it is and how much it got destroyed just by like landing on its tip. It didn't survive. None of what was exposed survived. It all just got completely smashed. I feel like that shows how much it's really just a cream shadow in a skinny little stick. So that's the look. I feel like even without mascara, it's a banger, but I am going to apply mascara. I'm gonna use my e.l.f. Big Moon Mascara because it's my like gunkiest, chunkiest mascara right now. And I feel like that's very Italian movie star, at least the way that I think of it. Okay, so that's that. The moral of the story is that eye-wise, eyes-wise, the hero product from Victoria Beckham is definitely the eye kajal 
in bronze, in my opinion. I haven't tried any of the other colors. Although the reason that I tried it, I wanted, I really, really wanted to try the lip liner, but it was sold out when I placed this order. And so I put this in my cart, like instead of it as like a consolation prize. I was like, I guess I'll try this. And part of why I thought to do that was that my friend Simbri, who's tried a couple products from Victoria Beckham, loves the eyeliner and says that it's like one of the best she's ever tried. And I think she has the brown one. So apparently it has been a standout product to other people, not in this color, but to me, it's the combination of the formula and this particular color that makes it, I'm gonna say it, a holy grail, even though we all know they're the holy grail. For me, this has like skyrocketed to holy grail status, like from the first moment that I applied it to my eyes. I will totally totally purchase this again with my own money as soon as this one runs out. And I probably will use it up because that's how much I love it. And that's how frequently I've been using it. And I try test out like a good bit of makeup over here. And that rarely happens. Like, again, I think that it, ha it happened recently with the Rose Ink Concealer. And this is the other thing that I can think of like in the past six months for which that's happened. And for all that I besmirched the smoky eye brick, I'm really feeling like not bad about the eye look. I feel like you can see though how the density, the brightness of the copper was a little difficult to control. Like it looks, there's like a bright patch on the inner part of this eye and in, and like in a different spot on this eye. If you're in really close and you're like examining it, like if I were gonna take pictures for Instagram or something, then it, it doesn't look flawless and even enough for that. But from a distance, in practice, for just wearing around, it's fantastic. The whole the whole look, I think, looks fantastic. Okay, let's move on to, what should we do next? Did I say that I had six products and I really just have five? Because I think I ordered four and then I have a fifth one. If I've been saying that there are six, I'm sorry, but I'm pretty sure there are just five and really just four that I'm testing. And then I'm gonna talk about Onyx at the end. So I put the smoky eye brick on and the eyeliner. And now let's go ahead and do the lip product because my lips are feeling a little dry. I would love to get something on them. So again, it's in the shade Girl. I'm going to apply it and then I'll talk to you about it. Again, I really wish that I had the lip liner because I feel like the Victoria Beckham lip is all about subtly or not so subtly overlining your lips with the lip liner and filling them in and then using like, I don't know, like a half application of the lipstick on top to like give it a little bit of shine and, and make it a little bit more supple. So I tried to get that overlined look, that like, <laughs> like plumped up lip look by overlining a bit with this product and using a brush to like buff the edges. But it's not as effective as having the lip liner would be because it's quite a bit shinier, like glossier than I expected it to be. The bullet, it's interesting. It appeals to me for a lot of reasons. The bullet is very hard and dense and it feels like it's going to take a long time to go through it. It doesn't feel like super soft or creamy. But then when I start to apply it, there's a lot of pigment and the product that comes off on my lips ends up coming off quite thickly and being very nourishing feeling and having a bit of shine. So I feel like a lot of times we get this kind of thick application of shiny product from a bullet that's very soft, almost like a cross between a lip gloss, like a stick gloss, like a highly pigmented stick gloss. The way that it applies reminds me of, for example, the M Cosmetics lip cushion. But the lip cushion is much softer and crushier and meltier. This is a sturdiness and like a body to it. So it ends up feeling like it, it looks a little bit like that M Cosmetics thing, like a cross between uh, like a lip balm and a lipstick that's quite pigmented. It ends up looking like that and it ends up feeling nourishing in that same way, but there's not as much product on my lips. There's a thinner application of product on my lips and it feels much sturdier and much more long lasting than that type of like crushy gloss balm lipstick hybrid. It feels like a real lipstick, like a sturdy lipstick. So I like that because I prefer long wearing products. I prefer things that feel like they're going to last a long time, that feel like you stay where you, where you put them, that feel like you stay. Products that feel like they stay where you put them. And this has all of those qualities. But when it comes to a lip product, those qualities can sometimes go hand in hand with it being like quite matte or being really drying and not feeling good on the lips. And this isn't matte and it's not drying and it does does feel good on the lips. So overall, it's a standout formula and I do understand why it's such a cold classic. I like the color a lot 
too. Uh, you know, I feel like on the swatches, it looks very pale and very nude compared to a lot of the other ones. And on me, it just ends up looking mauve because I am so pale. So I kind of wish I'd gone with the like really, really pale one, which I can't remember what the name is. I think it used to have a different name and they changed it, but there's one that's even paler and more neutral than this. And I just thought that it looked like it was going to be like too, too dramatically washed out. And so I opted for something slightly more neutral. But now that I see how much color this actually has on me, I'm curious about the other one. So maybe at some point in the future, I'll give it a try or at least swatch it in store. It's definitely very wearable for me and I look forward to wearing it more. Let's do the cheek. So again, the shade is called mini skirt. I really like it. I feel like it has that, I think that they advertise it as a berry. I don't find this to be a berry at all. I feel like it's that sort of sunburny, browny red that works really well as like a go-to neutral on me because it kind of imitates the way that my cheeks get red, like actually red when I get sun. In a weird way, this is like my bronzer color. I like this color and I'm glad to be able to test out this formula in a color like this. But overall, I found the range of five colors to be a little bit uninspiring. Like there's nothing there that made me like really tingle and be like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to put that on my cheeks. I feel like there are five pretty safe colors, which maybe makes sense for a new launch. Um, but I would have liked to see one like very, very brown without that warmth. There's a brown one, but it's like that orangey brown. I would love to see one very, very brown or like really, really beigey pink or something like that. The formula of this is so interesting. It's very stiff, almost dry feeling. It's not creamy, but I find that a little bit doesn't really go a long way. Again, similar to the eyeshadow, I think that it's designed for people who are worried they're gonna mess it up and end up wearing too much blush. I like a lot of blush, so I applied a lot, but you saw I was like swiping it on and swiping it on. And I've got a lot of cream blushes where if I applied that much, it would be like insane. It would be like clown cheeks. And with this, look, it's blended away to something very natural and subtle. Even though that's true, even though it, it easily blends and like melts into the skin in terms of the finish, like the level of pigment, it definitely doesn't blend itself. It's like you have to kind of work at it with the brush. Like the lip product, the bullet is kind of hard. So I feel like I'm swiping it onto my face and I'm getting plenty of product applied to my face, but it feels like it's not making much of a dent in the bullet. You know, like with some cream products, it's like crushing against your skin, very, very soft, like the you know, like the um, eye cajal. But this, it's the it's much harder than I expected it to be physically, the bullet, and much harder than other cream blushes that are packaged like this and sold like this. I think though that that probably makes the final, final result sturdier. I think that because, like the lip product, I, I think that the finish is by design. It's not glossy, but it's not super matte either. The shine of my like illuminating base products is coming through. The finish is also very skin-like and kind of becomes one with the skin, both color-wise and texture-wise. I think all of that is by design. And I think the fact that the bullet is so hard is also by design because it makes it hard to apply too much. And then once you've applied it, it's hard for that even to be too much. You know what I'm saying? All, I feel, sort of for the same purpose. I've been using this bronze color sometimes to put my mole back on. And I feel like it kind of works for me. As a lover of blush and a lover of cream blush in particular, I'm a little bit bewildered by this product. I like the effect and I like the color and I love the luxurious packaging and I want to want to apply it. I want to love it. And I also feel like it's practical the way that it's designed and everything that I've said about it being by design. I think that all of that makes it compelling in theory and makes it something that I would like recommend or that I would be confident to like give to someone who likes makeup or someone who doesn't wear very much makeup. All of that's true, but I don't find myself wanting to wear it. I just, it doesn't call to me. It doesn't make me feel, I think, cause it doesn't have that like tactile satisfaction, like the gooiness, like you're painting on color. And I don't know. I would totally take it with me if I were going again, like on a long trip and I just wanted to have one, one and done dependable blush that I knew was always going to look great and that I couldn't mess up and that I could apply in low light and that would wear all day. That's the 
other thing I think because of that stiff formula, it's very long wearing. And a lot of cream blushes, because they're creamy, they're not as stable once they're applied. And this is like very stable. It's almost like a cream to powder. I would feel confident, yeah, like brushing my face with my hand and it's totally fine and nothing's gonna get stuck in it or anything. So there are all these things that make it ideal. I've just, I've had to force myself to test it because I keep wanting to reach for my Westman Atelier Baby Cheeks blush. And I actually like the color of this a lot better than the Baby Cheeks blush. But I just like how creamy and satisfying that one is and how I can just build and build and it's so blendable and and I don't know. There's, there's something about the way that all of the factors combine. And I think all of the factors are for a reason. There's something about the way they all combine that makes me not really love this. I like it, and in theory I love it, but I, in practice, I've had it for long enough, I've been testing it for long enough to tell you, to be able to tell you that in practice I don't really love it. The lip product I think I do love, but the color is just a little bit ho-hum for me. I think if I had gotten the other color, I might actually be like really falling in love with it, like really die hard. The eyeshadows, I already told you at the beginning, I kind of actively disliked them literally until today, so we'll follow its future career in my life with great interest. The thing that I really, really Really fell for is the eye cajol. So that's all four of the products that I got with for my self-sponsored review. And I'll touch briefly on the Lid Luster in Onyx. I didn't end up applying it today because, you know, the look really came together without it. But these Lid Lusters, it's like a standout product, I feel, from Victoria Beckham. It's a soft, creamy eyeshadow packed into like this luxurious little pot. And this one, I mean, look how it swatches. And I'll have overhead footage for you too. This is like very, very shiny and glossy. And it's got these like flakes that sort of crush against the skin and it's very spangly and especially under low light. Hold on. There, look at how it's shining. So this is just the ring light. So it's a warmer, softer light and it's just coming from one direction rather than the soft boxes which like shoots light from all directions and tends to kind of cancel out this like very, very wet looking shine. That is beautiful though. This is like the wet blackened charcoal shadow of my dreams. So I really like this. I feel like it's the glossy, sparkly, all over the lid luxury eyeshadow to end all glossy, sparkly, all over the lid luxury eyeshadows in this color. I really, I was looking for something like this for a long time and it's been wonderful to have it. I think of it as like a special occasion, occasion intense smoky eye or even like a holiday smoky eye. And I think I have done a look that primarily featured this. It was when I did the makeup look inspired by Bimini Bamboo Lash, the drag queen. They do a lot of, at least on their season of Drag Race, they were doing a lot of like really, really smoky, it was like a really thin brow and then like a super smoky, almost like 1920s inspired eye and a bold red lip and really, really powdered flat skin. So I did a video months ago at this point replicating that look or doing like an imitation of that kind of look and I used this shadow. So I'll try to remember to link that down below and you'll be able to see it in action. But it's fantastic, the formula is gorgeous and the effect is gorgeous. I want mink, it's like the brown one. It's on my personal wish list. It's like a piece of makeup that I might buy someday, but that's not a reason for me to like include it in a self-sponsored review because the point of the review was for me to test out products from this brand that I hadn't tried before. So that is it. I'd say that in a way, all things considered, it's a bit hit or miss. If I looked at this brand like wanting it to, wanting each piece of makeup to be everything that I want, everything for me specifically with my tastes, then I would feel like it's a bit hit or miss. I feel like what happened as I tested the makeup was that I started to really understand like the Victoria Beckham customer. And I'm just slightly not, the, like I'm just a little bit not the Victoria Beckham customer. There's just a, there are a few things about the way the makeup's designed for longevity, for or like being your one and only. Like I think a lot of these pieces, it's like you have your one lipstick, you know, and it's this, or you have your one cheek, your one cream cheek, and it's this, and it's never gonna cause a problem, and it's always gonna be perfect, and it's gonna work really well with your skin. Especially, I was feeling this way recently about Chantecai when I tested them, especially if your skin isn't in its first flush of youth, right? If you're in your 40s, 50s, beyond, I feel like these products are really designed to not cause the problems that other kinds of cosmetics can cause. Knowing that, 
or having perceived that or, you know, thinking that I've perceived that and then having that in mind, I actually really respect these products and I understand why this brand is doing so well. I think that they're very thoughtfully designed and they are doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. And that makes it an interesting brand to review because some of the products are doing what they're supposed to be doing and it aligns perfectly with what I want or what I didn't even know I wanted, like in the case of this bronze eye coal or eye kajal. But some of the products are doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing and they're leaving me feeling a little bit unsatisfied because I require or I prefer like a little bit more pigment from my makeup or a little bit more creaminess from my makeup and I'm willing to sacrifice ease of use or foolproof, foolproof fatigue. <laughs> foolproofness or longevity in some cases, I'm willing to sacrifice some of those things for like the creaminess and the pigment that I crave, that I enjoy using. I hope that this was helpful. It was really fun to review this brand. Let me know what else you wanna see in terms of a self-sponsored review coming up. I feel like I'm a little, I have some ideas, but I'm not as, I'm not bursting at the seams with ideas for self-sponsored reviews like I sometimes am, maybe because the year is winding down. So this is the moment. If there's something you've always wanted to see me review, especially if it's like a comprehensive brand review like this or semi-comprehensive, like, you know, a, a handful of things from a specific brand, let me know what you'd like to see. Let me know in the comments. And most of all, don't forget to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. 